We're just we're just pouring fluids into metal pots. I mean, how hard can that be, right? Yeah. yeah. That's all it is. <laughs> it's very easy, but it impresses the girls. <laughs> Hey everyone, so we have a special content piece for the show this year. We've seen a lot of comments while doing uh, LN2 overclocking, and there are two pretty pretty mean ones. One of them is, what's the point of liquid nitrogen overclocking? For example, when Joe was on, people said, you've wasted your life doing this. Really? <laughs> and then the other one is, uh, well, I guess it's just, it's so easy. So, extreme overclockers responding to mean comments. Before that, this video is brought to you by EVGA's new audio sound card, engineered by AudioNote. EVGA's CEO knows high-quality audio and has begun bringing sound cards back. The new audio sound card is capable of delivering hair-raising audio superior to onboard sound. The card includes a line-in, headphone, line-out, and mic-in, and a Sony Philips digital interface. New audio also leverages EVGA's PCB design experience, has upgradable op amps, and uses AKM premium components for its DAC and ADC. Learn more at the link in the description below. 8-Pack joining me first, a retired extreme overclocker, now working on a water cooling solution on our, what you'll see on our channel. Joe Stepanzi, aka Bearded Hardware, aka Stepanzi, Tin, who really wants to go home. <laughs> and I've asked him to stay for this stupid video. Kingpin now. And uh, Kinpin, AKA Vince, I guess Kinpin's more of your real name at this point on the cards anyway. How do you respond to what's the point of liquid nitrogen overclocking? Well, uh, the point of liquid nitrogen overclocking for me is just to pound the hardware into submission, you know? <laughs> just give it everything you can and get everything out of it possible. Well, you, you can't let the hardware know that it has the upper hand. No, you really, you, you know, whatever hardware it is, you've just got to Pound it, pound it, pound it for every less megahertz. Do you, do you apply that same approach to people who post that kind of comment? Uh, well, I'd like to, but I mean, they'll, they'll <laughs> never stand up. All they do is type on their keyboards, you know? <laughs> Come on, stand up. Well, other than the, to get, get the best score possible, other point is also have a stress test for the graphic card or the motherboard or the like, CPU. So like when we design the new hardware, like we don't know what's the actual limit. So when we want to like the best make the design the best VRM or even like PCB layout, we will overclock. And that applies even for the normal overclocking, like water water cooling and normal air cooling. But you don't cannot put, put a, push as much because that you are always limited by temperature. And with LN2, we can remove that limitation on the temperature and always max out like maximum power, maximum voltages, and see what's the weak point. And then we can design better hardware using that knowledge. Right, so you actually use it in, it, for people who don't know, I guess, you, you work at EVGA doing engineering on like the KB cards, right? Yeah, like that's essentially the whole point. We research what the limitations are and improve on those limitations and then it's become an available product which you can buy in, in example of the Kingpin card or dark serious motherboards from EVGA. Does, so does that, this, the work you do there, does it end up getting applied like to a lower down skew over time? Yeah, but it takes like extra time like when we find out the solution it usually applies for the general all the designs but because of the cost and the uh, skus like usually we will use maybe like 20 percent of improvement for the other end skus and for the best possible uh, units like dark or kingpin boards then we will use everything we learn what is the point of ln2 overclocking mm, girls <laughs> it's girls really man. yeah, yeah. Hey, I met my wife here. She was a G-Skill showgirl. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's actually a pretty legitimate answer then. That's true. <laughs> I do it for the girls, man. <laughs> also, yeah. it's, uh, it's to keep Joe off the streets, you know? You right? know, that's a good point. Yeah, it, ke it keeps him busy, you I know? Mean, Stops you his drinking and so on. Keeps him, keeps him uh, flat-footed on a night, you know? Gives him something to do before he goes to bed. This kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think on one live stream the other day, wasn't he reading his EVGA dark manual uh, and <laughs> yeah, praying yeah. to Kingpin or something? <laughs> Can't remember, but something like that. I think that's right. Yeah. So, so, so uh, one, it's fun. It pushes the industry for two, and it keeps Joe employed. <laughs> Number exactly. three. Perfect. <laughs> and speaking Thanks, of everyone. speaking of Joe, we'll get him next. Let's see what he has to say. Yeah. Joe, when I was talking to Eight Pack, he said that one of the main reasons people are wrong that there's no point to Alan two overclocking is because it keeps you employed. <laughs> it keeps employed. Otherwise, they'd just be slacking all the time, right? Yeah. It keeps you off yeah. the streets. Yeah. 
do you, so, so the comments, you've seen it, you've seen it during our streams. What is the point of Alan 2 overclocking? Well, I remember you were, had said something about what is the point of gaming? Yeah. Yeah. What is the point of doing um, anything that's fun? That's fun. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I like to do stuff that's fun and I, I enjoy benching and I'll probably always bench. So, so what is, let's, let's do the quick, quick top level. What is it that you find fun about it then? Because apparently some people can't understand it. Well, a lot of people are very sensitive when it comes to those things. So like, um, I don't know, I like to like, just beat other people. So I like to be, I mean, if, if there's someone's like, oh, I got this score, I'm like, yeah, mine's better. I, I'm noticing a trend between you and 8-Pack. He said the reason he likes benches is because he can pound the hardware into the ground. <laughs> Basically, I like to go full Hulk with hardware. Ask Tin, because he, he usually has to fix it. <laughs> right, Tin? <laughs> the other question is, uh, it's or comments, I should say, it's easy. All you do is pour LN2 from one can into another. Oh, I hear that all the time. All you have to do is put LN2 on it, and it will magically overclock itself, which is total BS. I mean, I don't know. That, that, that one drives me nuts because it's actually a lot more skill than that. I mean, anybody could do on water. Well, you know? like, like pouring, a uh, method of pouring, right? Maintaining a temperature, knowing right. how the GPU is going to, like, spin up under load, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. You saw just even before, like, how much we had to, like, pour, 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 pour. Then have to go get more LN2, pour, 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 pour. It, it takes a lot. And then torch it when you're on the CPU test the GPUs don't get too cold. Oh, there's a lot of diff It's grueling. It's terrible. But I love every minute of it. Even with the normal overclocking on on air, like yeah, you, you can apply the clocks plus 100 and then run the benchmark. That's easy. But actually, to get the best score, like sometimes you have to try, just test the drivers for like whole week, like to find out the best driver. And that's not even touching the LN2. And then when you up, up, add the LN2 into that, then everything becomes much more complicated because now you need to worry about not having the right settings, right voltages, and right timing to power. You also need to keep like the manage your LN2 system and everything like like when we, we demo the LN2 rigs in the Computex demo and even just benching, we always like the time management is very important and just that alone make it very hard. And I should point out too that. Uh, you also do physical hardware work to do the overclocking on yeah, these yeah. cards. You actually have to like uh, assemble the cards and make sure it got the contact is right, not too much, not not too less. Otherwise, you will kill the hardware in the first session you try. And soldering in, you've done like power mods and stuff. And we'll have a separate video on that, I think. So the power mods, you, know, you get into uh, into some engineering level work. That's very interesting. <laughs> and is encouraged by Alan 2 overclocking. Yeah, when we're doing the extreme overclocking guides, like uh, for the Kingpin and Dark Series, I try to document like all these findings and like how actually user can apply those settings, change those settings, and what will happen in, in the result, like how they can get the better score as, as well. Even if running the same same score, same frequency, you can get very different performance. You know, any of the extreme overclockers will tell, will tell you that it's very skilled keeping the right temperatures, testing the whole, all the hardware, binning the whole hardware, making sure it doesn't die, making sure there's no water on the system, uh, and really fighting for the last few points, you know, knowing that you've maxed out that system. It's very much uh, also like uh, the Formula One cars, for example, no one can drive a Formula One car, but the, everything that's done in extreme overclocking is then uh, introduced by the vendors over time into their everyday products and helps everyone get the extra performance boost for free. It's free performance. If you're not paying for it, why not? You know, do it. Well, it's also why you see like some of the boards, PCBs, video cards, GP, or uh, motherboards now pushing towards higher quality VRM designs too. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's uh, obviously inspired by the by the elite tier high end overclocker uh, over time who've passed on the aspirations for more power, more power, more <laughs> power, you know, to the uh, individual motherboard vendors. And the vendors have got back from the overclockers, obviously the marketing that's associated with having all the world records uh, and the prestige of winning uh, competitions. So it's, it's a kind of two way thing, product development and also a prestige thing. Uh, and hopefully it helps the gamer to get more for FPS, the renderer to get faster uh, and more uh, hypothetical workloads and so on and so on. Yeah, all indirectly just through the research that ends up happening for overclocking as well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, uh, more and more vendors, uh, uh, be, you know, they, they're all the time trying to gain uh, a USP. Uh, and obviously, the higher the board can overclock, especially on uh, ambient conditions, which pretty much anyone can do, uh, uh, the, the more that they gain uh, uh, market share and the more they gain reputation.
uh, and you can see from the evolution of boards from when I started doing it where uh, you had to solder dip switches onto the board just to change multipliers to how now it is so easy to do uh, a basic ambient overclock without killing something which in the past you know a wrong solder everything's dead now this is all at BIOS level in the main you know you don't have to start solving so it's 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 actually a broad adoption of overclocking really and we're just taking it to the extreme uh, to push the engineering and to, to to if you like push the envelope it's like juggling like five machetes at once basically right i mean you have all these different components you have to kind of real time know what what they're all doing you have all the parameters you have the voltage the temperature it's a lot man you got a lot going on at one time right and you drop one machete and you, you kill a card. Yep. And then all the machetes start falling. <laughs> so that is, uh, that's Kinpen's answer. That's 8-Pack's answer. All right, so that's Tin's answer. So that's Joe's reason for LN2 overclocking. And uh, we'll go ahead and plug his site too, kinpencooling.com. Kinpen yep. You know, there's one more thing I want to get your opinion on. Uh, this guy, Joe Staponzi. You know, you know who he is? Yeah. Okay. So, so what, what do you think of that guy? He's all right. He's all right? Joe's all right. Is it, is it true that without LN2, he would be unemployed? Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think without LN2, this guy, <laughs> he'd be a street dweller for sure. <laughs> so that'll be the end of our video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. You can click the links below to check out all these guys. I'll see you all next time.